Hello everybody and welcome to yeah, Manchester United Transfer News. Uh, it's our weekly show. We're talking all the latest Manchester United transfer news and as we approach this January transfer window, Jaden Sancho, um, surprisingly, is a, is a story around January. A lot of people talking about it this week. Clearly not very happy at Dortmund. Is there a possibility that Sancho could be coming to Manchester United in January? Forget the summer, in January. He is being dropped for games for Dortmund. There's clearly an issue at Dortmund. And this would be the ideal scenario if you're looking to sign Jadon Sancho. That breakdown in communication, that breakdown in the relationship between him and Dortmund. From a Manchester United point of view, I mean, you look at the clubs that are interested. I would also add in Real Madrid with uh, Tottenham and, uh, and Manchester United. And, of course, um, maybe even Manchester City, Chelsea. I mean, it could be an infinite list. Um, I've put the odds at 5-1 to one because I do think that there is an opportunity for United to buy him. And I don't think it's an, an outside chance. I think that if... The circumstances fit Jadon Sancho, he would come to Manchester United. And for me, that would mean United between now and the summer, showing progression, getting Champions League football and building for the future. That's a project with the right money that Jadon Sancho would move from Dortmund to Manchester United. Whether it can happen in January, I think I've said this before and I'll say it again from United's point of view. If, you, if there is any opportunity to sign Jadon Sancho in January, they should do it. I think if they wait till the summer, then it may be very, very difficult because I'm not confident at this moment in time that United will have Champions League football. Liverpool will definitely have it. Manchester City will have it. Real Madrid will have it. Maybe even Spurs or Chelsea will have it. And they will have an advantage. They will have it. They will have that advantage. They will have Champions League football that we don't have. So United would have to say, this is our second year not in the Champions League. We are stagnating. We are not a well-structured club. But we'll pay you good money. Please do come. And then you're looking at a young player of 19, 20 years of age by that time saying... I'll come to United because you might be good and you're going to pay me good wages. It's not actually the, you know, I would take him, of course, but it's not actually what we want. We want him to come to our club because he wants to develop and become one of the world's best players at our club. Therefore, January would make a lot of sense for United. And if I was Manchester United and there was even a hint that Sancho can be a done deal in January, I would pay the little bit extra to do it because it might not be a possible deal to do in May. And also, if you bring Sancho in in January, he can play in the Europa League because he's played in the Champions League. You can do that. And he would make us a better team in those last few months of the season. So, And ultimately, that's what we should be looking at. Not politically, our only chance of getting him might be January if we don't get Champions League football in the summer. But it also... Let's get him in January because, hey-ho, we're a football club and we want to be good on the football pitch. And he would massively improve us on the football pitch. I mean, from Dortmund's point of view, are they going to want to lose a player like that? But I've always said this about January. It's a very hard transfer window, but it's not impossible. You can do big business in January. You know, big deals have been done. I think Torres went from Liverpool to Chelsea in January. Liverpool bought Suarez in January, probably. I don't know, but there has been some big deals done in January. And United could do that deal. If the relationship between Dortmund and Sancho is, as reported, not that strong... It could be done. And, and people saying 100 million, I think 80 million is probably more realistic. I think 80 million is more realistic. But if United, if United are serious, if United are serious, what's the problem with spending 100 million pounds in January on Jadon Sancho? Would you have a problem with it? Because I wouldn't. I think this is a player that has the potential to be one of the top five players in the world in the next five years. And 100 million pounds for a player like that is cheap. And Premier League suits him. It's the next move he needs to make. I, I, I just think, you know, I don't think we'll do it in January. But I think if we want to do Jan get Jadon Sancho, January is probably the time to go and do it. So I watch this with interest because, it's, again, my my confidence in do it, as doing this deal at all is low because I don't trust this board at all. I, I think that they talk the talk and they don't walk the walk too many times. But if United are serious about building a future and are serious about being a club of the future that's, that, that, that fights for titles, then this is a deal that you do. And you, you don't hide behind the summer. If United, for, for whatever reason, put out there, where are we going to wait till the summer? They've lost. Because you're not, I don't think we're going to get top four and I don't think we'll get him. But uh, give us your thoughts in relation to that one, of course. Um, the next player I want to talk about is Kay Havertz. We've been linked to him. Uh, definitely a player that I would look. As you can see, I've said Man City interested, Liverpool, Manchester United, same sort of team, uh, teams again. Chelsea are interested. 
But to me, I put him out at 10 to 1. I think he would be similar to Sancho. He'd probably go between 80 and 100 million pounds. But I put him out 10 to 1 to United because this is a young German player who plays in the midfield and um, is very, very well high thought of. Um, he was speaking in the week about moving uh, away from Leverkusen and, you know, didn't, didn't, certainly didn't say he wouldn't go to a United or the Premier League. But I think we all know where he's going to go. Um, this is something that, you know, I don't, I, well, I mean, it'd be great if United did do it, but Bayern Munich do it very, very well. Bayern Munich just dominate the German league. If, if there's any good players, equivalent would be, imagine Manchester United, there's a decent player at Chelsea, they're up and coming, United just buy them. There's a decent player at Liverpool, United just buy them. That's what Bayern Munich do in Germany. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a rival or not. They will take Dortmund players, they will take Leverkusen players, that's what they do. And I think they, they will take Kay Havertz as well. So I, I think that it happened with Goretzka as well. I think Goretzka maybe should have come to United or, or gone to Liverpool. He's not doing great things at Bayern, isn't he? Um, so, but I do think Havertz would end up at, at Bayern Munich. Um, I just don't think it's the sort of signing United would make, if I'm absolutely honest as well. But we have been linked to him. A um, few people got excited about him. But I would certainly put him in that category of, yeah, what a signing he would be. And I think if City got him or Liverpool got him, I'd be very impressed with a signing like that. But I just don't think United are, are going to get him, if I'm absolutely honest. And I, and I don't think we, 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 I don't think we're really operating in that sort of market anyway. Um, I think Jaden Sancho's different because he's English. Um, and he will understand the, the, the enormity of Manchester United Football Club and, and might want to be part of that rebuild. Kay Havertz, a German player, is Manchester United going to appeal to him? I, I don't think so. I mean, he's got to move away from, uh, from, um, from, from the country that he's from, Germany, to come to a foreign league to play in a club that's very fragmented. I just don't see it. And I think as well... I think he. I think I have heard him say before that the, the advantage of uh, staying in Germany is that you've got your friends and your family close by. But Real Madrid are interested as well, and and, and United, unfortunately, we, we don't operate in those. Um, I think Pogba was the last big deal we did that maybe teams like Real Madrid wanted, and I don't think we can do that anymore. I don't think we've got that pull, whether it's through the manager or, or, or the poor recruitment. I just don't think that we have. But certainly a player I do like. I do like the look of. Um, I just want to mention another player as well because I was playing the FIFA stream on on that football the other day, and somebody mentioned. Frank Kessie at um, AC Milan and uh, you know there are so many players out there that are gettable that do fill a problem that we've got and I would say this about any signing look look at Fred 50 million it's been a bit of an up and down ride um, Schneiderlin Premier League proven didn't didn't prove anything at Old Trafford so if you sign a player, you can get excited about it. It doesn't mean they're going to do well. But there are plenty of options out there. I really think we've got to stop this Brexit FC thing and stop looking at people like Longstaff and Declan Rice because there are so many midfielders out there around Europe that I think are better, are cheaper and, and, and would make us a better team. So, yeah, Frank Cassie, uh, definitely the sort of player. I think, you know, very, very good player, very energetic player, decent on the ball. I think he'd be very good for our midfield. Um... As I said last week, Zakoria, uh, Grilch, there are plenty of midfielders out there and I really do think that United need to be looking, uh, looking at that. And, and, you know, I'll bring Emre Can in again. He was on the show last week, not, not personally, but I do think this deal for me, and I, I'm driving this deal as I'm, I know some United fans are, I just think this deal is the one that really jumps out at me in the midfield that we should do. £30 million tops, 25 years of age, played in the Premier League, played for Germany, played for, for Juventus, very experienced player in the midfield, just ticks those boxes that Gary Neville's been on about, that you lot have been on about, that it's great to have all these young players coming through. Of course it is. But where's the experience? Where's the players for now? And that, for me, is why Emre Khan is, is an obvious deal for Manchester United to do. And again, he might not work. It might not work. But it's certainly the sort of signing we should be looking at as opposed to going out and getting another young player that might be good in the future. And I'm talking about the Declan Rice and the Longstaff. Um, it'd be wrong of me not to talk about Erling Haaland. Um, definitely a player that United are looking at. Um, it's interesting. I don't know about you, but if I had the options between Timo Werner and, and Erling Haaland, I would go with Timo Werner. Uh, from Leipzig, um, but uh, again, I, I, I'm not convinced that Werner wouldn't go to a, 
a Bayern Munich or maybe even a Liverpool over us. Um, team, uh, but Erling Haaland does offer something different. He's tall. Um, he's got. He's good in the air. He's got all sorts of goals in him. He's got that connection with Oli from Mulder. But the interesting thing is, and we, 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 you know, you look at what's happened with Spurs and Pochettino, and they've got a new manager. And look at what's happening with Emery. The January transfer window is very close, but in some ways, it's very far away. And we've got these games coming up this week: Spurs and Man City, and then we've got plenty of games before January. You talk about the connection between Haaland and and and, and Ali, and imagine if United are working on a deal in January. And this is where this transfer show and the rest of the shows, you know, the, the games and, and, and the match reactions and the previews and the call-ins sort of merge here because the scenario around transfers is you don't just pick the phone up on January the 1st and go, can we sign Emre Can? Can we sign Erling Haaland? Can we sign Sancho? They will have been working on these now. Whoever United are going for in January, they'll have been working on these deals now with the club, with the player, tentatively finding if a deal can be done. This is what I mean. Like, if Erling Haaland is a viable option for United to bring in from Salzburg, a lot of that will be to do with Solskjaer because he's the manager at the moment. And there is that previous relationship with uh, his dad, but certainly with him himself at Mulder, Ali was his manager. So, but what if United get hammered by Spurs and City and there is a demand to sack Oli? You sack that manager, but what happens to your January targets? And it's another reason why. I don't think United would sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in so, unless, unless something momentous, ha momentous happened in relation to losing so many games they have to do it. I don't think they want to sack him because he protects them, as I said on the show last night. But also, I don't think they want to sack him because I think if they are spending money in January, then it almost goes out the window. I mean, I'll put it like this, right? United are working on Emre Khan, Erling Haaland and Jadon Sancho in January. Of course, they're not working on those three players, but let's pretend that they are, right? You sack Oli after the derby because he loses three games in a row. Do you still go and sign Emre Khan, Haaland and Sancho, knowing that the next manager might not want them? But you know that they, this is what I mean. I think they've gone all in with Oli is what I'm trying to say. It's all or nothing, no matter what the results they're going to go bankrupt with it. We, we're going with this and we're going to see what happens. And I, th I do think that that is the case. So, yeah, our Erling Haaland could happen. Um, it could happen. I mean, we, I mean, realistically, we could end up playing against him in the Europa League. It's looking like Napoli and Liverpool go through from that group. And if Salzburg come third, which is likely, we could play them in the Europa League, which could be a reason why Salzburg are like, well, we're not selling him because he could be playing against us. I, Again, the January transfer window is very, very hard to work in. Of course it is, but it isn't impossible and money talks. Um, unfortunately, our club doesn't like spending loads of money. So, you know, <laughs> there's a contradiction in what United do. United need to spend money and to spend money, you've got to be aggressive and sometimes you've got to spend more than you would like to. For example, Jaden Sancho, Dortmund might say, 80 millions are not enough. We want 100 million in January or you're not having him. And United would probably walk away because we've heard United, we've heard Woodward say this in his interviews where Manchester United, we're not going to be taken for a ransom anymore. Oh, that's not, that's great. So you keep the money in the bank, but what we need those players, Ed. So sometimes you have to overpay to get what you need. Um, we do it in everyday life all the time. You know, it might be a Christmas present. It might be a rare thing that you need. You just need that item. You've got to overpay for it because there's a demand for it. But United seem to be putting it out there like it's a badge of honour. They were doing it in the summer. Oh, uh, play. You know, clubs think that they can take us for a ride. It's not going to happen. But we're not in a position of strength. If we were treble winners again and we wanted to sign Sancho and Dortmund said we want 100 million and we're only willing to play 80, you go, well, you know what? We'll walk away because what we've got's good enough. What we've got's not good enough. So we've got to overpay. And if you do overpay in January, you're probably going to get what you want. So yeah, Erling Haaland's hard. Jaden Sancho's hard. Of course they are. But they can be done if you pay the right fee. The problem is United have put it out there that they don't like to overpay and they won't be taken for a ride. So it, you get a catch-22 there. You don't get those players because we don't want to overpay. Um, simple as that, isn't it? Um, I want to mention Napoli as well. Napoli are going through a few problems at the moment. There might be a few players from there, especially around their midfield, that, that, that a lot of people like. Koulibaly, I think the thing with Koulibaly is I can see him going to Man City and 
the, the, the ridiculous thing with this is that it's all about timing, isn't it? It's a bit like the manager situation. United never seem to time it right when they need a manager. The manager, the, the good managers all seem to be gone. Um, with Koulibaly, United wanted Koulibaly in the summer. Liverpool inquired about him and both clubs were told you're going to have to pay north of £100 million. Since then, there's been problems at Napoli. Some players want to leave. Man City need a centre-back. Man City are the richest club, really, in relation to how they spend. And um, I can see Koulibaly leaving Napoli for around £70 million. So not only did we, did we not get Koulibaly, I can see him going to City and going for a lot cheaper than what we play that, that we were quoted. But it's all about timing, isn't it? We, we're not going to go for Koulibaly now, are we? We don't need Koulibaly. You've got Twan Sebi coming through. Lindelof's there, Phil Jones. And of course, we spent a lot of money on Harry Maguire, so we're not going to go and get Cooley Barley. Of course, I would rather have had Cooley Barley over Harry Maguire. Nothing nothing against Harry Maguire. He's a good centre-back, but he ain't Cooley Barley, is he? So, um, but I, I, we keep getting linked to Cooley Barley. It's a bit like getting linked to Nicola Gaetan um, of ben, Benfica all those years ago. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But something is going to happen in January because... If Ollie's still there, he keeps hinting about January. He said it yesterday, didn't he? Having Paul Pogba's back's like a world-class signing. And we all go, oh, God, no. God, no. He's talking about an injured player coming back being a new signing. And we all think, oh, here we go. It's like having a new signing back, so we won't make any signings. But he did also say in the same interview, it's, not, it's like having a new signing back before the January transfer window. So to me, that I think United you know, are going to do something in January. Of course, the big fear is, the big fear is in January... That instead of um, bringing in a Jaden Sancho or anything like that, it will be a Mandzukic or a Rakitic, you know, you know, dead man walking really, OAPville. So um, yeah, just because we're going to do some business in January doesn't mean it's going to be the business that we need to do, but we'll have to see. Anyway, please do smash a like on the video, everybody. Get your comments in below. I personally think we can do big business in January. You've got to be brave and ruthless to do it. So I don't think we won't, because I just don't think this club wants to spend the big money. But I do think that these deals can be done. Um, get in the comments, like I say. Smash a like on the video, and it's the big one tomorrow. Watch along. Villa versus United at Old Trafford. Fan cams and everything ahead of a big week ahead. Massive week ahead. I'll speak to you all soon. Also, just to say, Five Cantonars Jumper, Christmas. It's here now. It's Christmas weekend. Link in the video description. Get yours. They're available to everybody worldwide. So uh, links in the video description if you want to get hold of one of those. I'll speak to you soon.